Roy McIlroy recently put a TaylorMade QI10 LS driver into his golf bag, and it got me thinking about all the really cool stuff over the years that Roy McIlroy has used. So in this video, we're gonna go in the Wayback Machine, and I'm gonna show you some of the coolest, lesser known equipment that Roy McIlroy has used in competition. Let's go. Okay, so the very first picture I wanna show you, this one here was taken in 2006. Roy McIlroy is still an amateur at this point. He is not a professional player, but he is playing essentially a bag full of Titleist equipment. This driver is only 400 cc's. Today we're using 460. This is 400, and it also only has seven and a half degrees of loft. This is a Titleist Pro Titanium 905S driver. Very small. Uh, obviously, to hit at the distances Rory needed, you needed a lot of club head speed. You needed to be able to really square it up and hit it just right. Elite players love the 905 series. This is one of the clubs that players, when they see it, they just have fond remembrances of it. Along with the Fairway Woods, the old 975 series, um, th this was really sort of the golden age, if you will. A lot of players just really love this. Rory was one of them. Now, a year later, we go into this photograph here. Rory is starting to break out. 2007 is his big year. He um, really is, he's the low amateur at uh, the 2007 British Open at Carnoustie. That was Padraig Harrington, if you remember, beating Sergio Garcia. Um, but Rory, as you'll notice, is using a different driver. We're now in the 907 series. This is a D2, slightly more stable um, than the D3s, sort of like what we see with the 2s and the 3s in the TSR series, still to this day but Rory is staying in the new drivers. If we go into the putters, what gets interesting, and this is something that I wanna want you to really pay close attention to throughout this video. Rory uses a whole bunch of different putters, but at this point in his career, 2007, he is using a Scotty Cameron Newport style putter, a classic heel toe weighted blade putter. It has a plumber's neck, which means that it has about one shaft's width of offset. That means that the blade itself is about one shaft width behind where the shaft comes down. Um, that helps you square it up a little bit, but it's a very classic shape. As we continue through though, let's get into some of the irons now that Rory has in his bag in 2007. Now in 2007, Rory is playing the Titleist 606 MBs. This is a much lesser known, uh, not a lot of fanfare around this, but the 606 MB was a classic muscle back blade. What made it sort of unique is that it had a bore through hosel, meaning that the um, hosel basically bored right through and there was a hole that was covered by a cap section in the very back of the heel. If we fast forward now into 2008 and then into 2009, you see that Roy starts playing this Titleist ZM muscle back blade. This again was a little bit of an offshoot. The muscle sort of had this Z uh, shape in the back of it so that there was a little bit more mass out in the toe section. It got a little bit narrow in the middle and then a little bit more mass again in the heel area. And Rory played these along with Vokey Design wedges for about one season. Uh, because then once we get into this picture, which I took at the 2010 Accenture Match Play Championship, but it was played in uh, Arizona, then Rory is now into the 710 MB. And this is going to start to again have a much more familiar look um, to many of the irons that we're gonna see throughout the rest of this video. This is a little bit closer look at that 710 MB. You can see, again, not a lot of frills, not a lot of meat on the bone here. You need to have a very powerful, repeatable swing, an extremely compact blade length. This was the shortest blade length, most control-oriented iron in the title of stable back in 2010. Now, this photograph I absolutely love because remember we saw a couple of years ago, Roy McIlroy using a classic heel toe weighted blade putter with that um, plumber's neck hosel. This is a center shafted putter that he is using at Celtic Manor in the 2010 Ryder Cup. Roy has a huge Ryder Cup. Obviously Team Europe runs away with this thing. Roy McIlroy using a center shafted putter. Now he's used some small compact mallets that had center shafts early in the 2010s. Um, and this version, again, still staying with Scotty Cameron. He's still a Titleist player at this point. As we transition here, you can see that he has now gone into um, the 910 D2 driver, a very traditional shape. Kind of got to love the hair. This is the frosted tips version of Roy McIlroy that we're getting here. He's also got the 910 F series three wood, and he would keep that 910 F in the bag for a long time. He loved that club, got tremendous performance from it. Um, it's around for quite a while. Roy McIlroy fans, just by the shirt in this video, in this uh, image right here, you're going to know that we are at Congressional, and this is where Roy really goes into full flight. 
and just blitzes the field of congressional wins his first major, the 2011 U.S. Open. Again, notice the putter now. We're back into a Scotty Cameron, a Newport-style blade putter at this point. It has, again, that classic plumber's neck hosel to it. Roy putted great on those soft, wet greens. We got a lot of rain um, there. This is now a close-up image of that putter and you can see that it's got the really nice tight milled face this is before cameron started getting into deeper mills um, and now these days with the dual milling this was pretty much the standard milling that you would get on most of the scotty cameron circle t putters and as you can see it's stamped roars out into the toe I took this photograph as we transition here at the pga championship at kiowa uh, rory would go on to win this pga championship as well He's now transitioned into the SM4 family of wedges, and he has roars stamped, as you can see, in yellow. Raw steel for Rory and all these, because he gets sometimes a little bit of a special grinding on there. And the raw steel will oxidize over and sort of hide the scuff marks. If you, if you grind on a wedge that has been chromed, then that grinding mark, or wherever it's been sort of sanded off, that will oxidize because the chrome plating has been removed, but everything else stays shiny. So a lot of tour pros prefer to go with raw steel wedges because you can grind them and the look will be sort of more, much more uniform, the way that it rusts and oxidizes. Okay, now moving on, now we are in the Nike days. This is 2013, as you can see that Rory is playing a Nike covert driver. He's got a bag filled with Nike equipment at this point. He has become one of the feature players for Nike Golf alongside Tiger Woods, and at this point also Michelle Wee. There are several other players that have signed on with Nike, but Rory coming over from Titleist to Nike was a huge, huge deal. If you've had a chance to see one of the videos that I did very recently where I did this same deep dive into Tiger Woods equipment, which I'm going to link to that up here, you'll remember that he put a Nike Method putter into the bag that I told you had some sort of uniqueness to it. Well, Rory does the same thing. So this is Rory McIlroy's Nike Method putter. But as we go and take a really close look at the face, remember that Nike Method putter stuff, it had cuts in and grooves that have been basically sawed into the hitting area and then nike had a polymer sort of injected into the bottom that would come out of those grooves and they cut just a little bit of that polymer away so that you get the benefit of the groove but the softness of the polymer well there are no grooves uh, that are going to be hitting that uh, golf ball in rory mcelroy's putter because basically that nike method putter right there that you can see um that is one uniform thing. So like Tiger Woods putter, Rory McIlroy was using a method putter. It was definitely not like the method putter that you would find though at retail. This is a very unique, this is a prototype piece of equipment that was in Rory's bag. It was there for a little while, um, but definitely not something you were gonna find off the shelf. Now I had a chance to go to this event. This was at Liberty National Golf Club during the Northern Trust. Um, one year back in 2015, and Rory McIlroy is on stage with Jimmy Fallon and Tiger Woods, and they are introducing the Nike Vaporfly Pro family of irons. And uh, at this point, Tiger Woods was not in the field. He came up to do this appearance with Jimmy Fallon, and, and Rory was up there with them. And this was really when Rory is, is now becoming the co-face, if you will, of Nike Golf with Tiger Woods. And at this point, what was really interesting is that the clubs that they were touting uh, Roy didn't put into the bag. He didn't really use those irons. He played them in a couple of tour events, but they never really stuck. He did, however, use the Nike Vaporfly drivers as well as the fairway woods. And as you can see here, that, that bright yellow Nike referred to as Volt coloring, it was hard to miss. Um, he played with those irons for a while, and now we're going to transition into these Nike uh, VR Pro Classic Muscleback Blade irons. And this is what Rory was really using for quite a while. The VR Forged Wedges, you can know that Rory, throughout his career, has been a four-wedge player. Traditionally, it's something along the lines of 46, 52, 56, and 60. But the stated lofts and the real lofts sometimes are two different things. Rory has used traditionally uh, three iron or four iron through nine iron in his irons, but then goes with wedges as all of his wedges, including the pitching wedge. So he does not have a pitching wedge that matches his iron set. And you can sort of see in the background there, there's a 46 degree um, Nike VR forged wedge that's in there. What gets interesting is we sort of move now into 2016. This is now early 2016. Uh, he is using the Engage wedges. They have a totally different shape on the back. Very, very angular. Um, there were several different sole grinds and sole configurations that you could get into the engaged wedges. But you'll notice once again, VR Pro irons are running through the bag for Rory. 
four wedges. Um, then some interesting things start to happen. As you might recall, Nike leaves the hard goods scene. They make the announcement in the summer of 2016 that they are no longer going to make uh, golf clubs, golf balls, golf bags. They're going to be apparel and footwear only. So like all the other players that Rory, uh, are, are Nike players, Rory McIlroy is an equipment free agent. And the way that it's been explained to me is that Nike would continue to pay out guys' contracts uh, until they finished if they didn't switch or sign with a new golf equipment company. So players like Brooks Kepka, Tony Fina, Rory McIlroy, Francesco Molinari, um, all those players could run through their Nike deal, continue to get paid, could use what they wanted, but they couldn't sign a new deal. So you had all these free agents out there. Roy McIlroy in the late season of 2016 and going to early 2017 starts using all kinds of different stuff, including this. So a lot of people may not be aware that for a little while, Roy McIlroy was playing Callaway off contract. Um, so Roy McIlroy, this is him with an epic sub-zero driver. Um, and in this photograph, you can see here, this was taken in early 2017 at the South African Open. That is, again, him using an epic sub-zero driver um, and testing it out. Now, the, what Rory explained to me, and most of the Nike guys have told me, is that once they became free agents, every golf equipment company basically sent them everything they could possibly imagine. They had a house filled with golf equipment, with golf equipment companies trying to woo them to come on. Obviously, Rory would have been one of the biggest fish to try and land. He had tried out the Callaway stuff in competition, including some of the epic three woods um, and fairway woods. He even, as you can see in this image here, went into an Odyssey putter for a very, very brief time at the beginning of 2017. It's a very similar shape to some of the Scotty Cameron stuff that we had seen him trying. Again, if you remember that, that um, center shafted putter, very similar in shape, compact mallet, a little bit extra perimeter weighting here. But at the Players' Championship in 2017, Roy McIlroy comes out with this golf bag right here, having just announced that he has assigned a deal with TaylorMade. And yes, there are much more than 14 clubs in this golf bag. You don't even see his putter in here. But Roy McIlroy is using M2 woods through the bag. Driver, a three wood. He had a couple of, of higher lofted fairway woods. There are some really strong uh, irons, a couple of which I'm going to show you that are really cool. Um, and these Roars Proto irons. He's got the original mill grind wedges in here. Um, this club is about as badass in my book as it gets. This is a one iron that... Taylor made made for Rory McIlroy, especially. He wanted this driving iron. He saw that Dustin Johnson had something like this. Rory said that he thought that this might be a really good club to use uh, in golf courses that are running fast, had windy conditions. He would take out the five wood, go with one iron, and he had it fit with a Project X um, it's hazardous black shaft, as I recall. And I just remember watching him hit missiles on the driving range at TPC Sawgrass, absolutely obliterating the ball. He had a three and a four iron um, of these P750 irons. Um, again, now this is a perimeter weighted, very compact blade length iron that Rory essentially used to get a little bit more lift, a little bit more spin than he would get with a traditional muscle back blade iron. Most of his irons, the five, six, seven, eight, nine, are going to be this Roars Proto. Now this was at a time when TaylorMade had just released or was about to release the P730 iron, which is very, very similar to this. But many of the tour's staff, the, their tour staff players had their own prototype versions. There was the, the DJ Proto for Dustin Johnson. Obviously, Tiger Woods had the, um, the Tiger Woods version, which eventually became the P7TW. There was the Roars Proto. There was a Tommy Fleetwood version. They all had slightly different blade lengths. That was the biggest difference, but they all had that same milling part that went right through the back. By removing that mass, it allowed TaylorMade designers to put a little extra weight into the muscle portion of that golf club, and that enhanced feel, or that's at least theoretically, what they were telling players is by taking out a little bit of the mass up high, it gave them the ability to drop the center of gravity put a little bit more mass at the bottom. Um, it kept the swing weight about the same, which is important for these players, and they didn't have to make the blade length any bigger or smaller. So the, the Roars Proto um, enters the bag in 2017, and it has really never left. There's one or two things I'm gonna show you here, but Rory McIlroy today is using the Roars Proto iron. For putters, Rory McIlroy, as you can see here, 2017, this is the Travelers Championship. He has a red spider putter. This will look very familiar to people who know that Jason Day used this putter. Many TaylorMade players were using spider putters by this time. Tremendously you know, popular, successful. 
Rory getting into this um, gets a little bit more consistency with the putting. Moving on to this one, this is 2018. Um, and you can see the Rohr's Proto irons are still in the bag. We still have um, the mill grind wedges. There is one 60 degree tailor-made milled grind high toe wedge, which I thought was actually pretty interesting. That had uh, obviously a higher toe, a different finish. Um, it has significant um, removal of material, a lot of heel and toe um, relief put into that. So for more versatility and the higher toe, uh, that was kind of interesting. And then when I saw this at the 2019 US Open, Rory has gone into three high toe wedges. You can see that he's got um, his standard pitching wedge there, but then a 52, a 56, and a 60 at the US Open at Pebble Beach. Now, Rory will still go in and out of high toe on course specific, and I think that really what is going through his mind with this is that on golf courses where there is very, very thick rough um, that tend to be a little bit damp, that can cause the ball to perch just a little bit. And by having a high toe wedge, it gives you a little bit more versatility. And if you would otherwise potentially go underneath the golf ball just a little bit and hit it higher on the face with a traditional wedge, a high toe wedge will have a little bit more mass up top. And you might be able to get a little bit better performance on shots when you might otherwise just go underneath the ball that's sitting in the rough sort of perched. Um, but again, the, the irons really haven't changed at this point. Now, moving on to this image, this is taken at the 2020 Arnold Palmer Invitational at Bay Hill. And the significance of that, obviously, is that this is the last tournament on the PGA schedule that was completed before COVID-19 uh, basically shut down the world, professional golf, everything else. We, I was able to go to this tournament, work at that one, and you can see that Rory is in sim. And he's got the sim driver at 10 degrees of loft, um, but it has actually been de-lofted just slightly. Um, and it is opening up also the face. The, the weight at the top you can see is still sort of in the neutral position, but the, the um, hosel setting has opened the face just a little bit, uh, de-lofted it, so it says 10 degrees, it's really about nine degrees, and it's a little bit more open. Um, you'll also notice that Roy McIlroy is using uh, the TaylorMade Sim uh, titanium version of the three wood as well as the five wood. Um, what I also thought was really interesting is moving into this picture, that is a two iron, that is a P790 two iron that Rory was checking out um, in the practice rounds at Bay Hill. Again, sticking with that longer iron. And again, the three and the four iron um, P760s. Now at this point, the 750 is gone, the 760s are, are in there, the three and the four iron. Rory has always brought lots of golf clubs to tournaments. And then based on the conditions and how he's feeling and how he strategically wants to go around the golf course, he will make the selection. Maybe it's gonna be driver three wood, five wood, driver three wood, two iron. Uh, maybe it's gonna be putting in something, wh whatever combination he feels of 14 clubs is gonna be the best. He's got a lot of versatility at the top of his bag. He's bringing lots of different sticks. The putter at Bay Hill, uh, we're now into the um, Spider X version. He is playing Spider, the X version, a little bit more compact. He's going with the Copper version with that white alignment aid at the top. You'll notice that he's playing a number 22 golf ball. He is playing a TP5. Uh, in, this ver in this case, he's playing the standard TP5 instead of the X ball. Um, the 22 is a number that is represented by power or it symbolizes power and strength and independence and Rory wanted that 22 to be on his golf ball. So for a long, long time, Rory played 22s. Now, these irons are really interesting because they did not last in Rory McIlroy's bag that long. This is the summer of 2020. Uh, this is at the US Open at Winged Foot. Again, I had a chance because it was close to home. Uh, I was one of the few members of the media that had a chance to go and work at Winged Foot. Um, this is the TaylorMade P7 MB iron from 2020. It is very angular. It has the very compact blade length, very thin top line and sole. Rory, I think, tried to make this work, um, but it just didn't stick around for very long um, because as you can now see, we're into 2021 and the Rory's Protos are right back in there. I think that Rory tried to make a good run at that, but he just loves these irons. There's just something about this shape and this design. That, uh, that really speaks to him. You'll notice now that we're in mill grind two with the wedges. He had been experimenting at this tournament where we were, um, and he had a 56, a 58, and a 60. 
A couple of, in a couple of instances, I'm fairly certain that Rory is de-lofting his wedges so that that 56 probably is really closer to 54 and the 60 is closer to 58. Now, why would you do that? Um, depending on exactly how the wedge grind is configured, when you change the loft on a wedge, you're also simultaneously changing the bounce. So when you strengthen the loft, say go from 60 to 58, you are going to also be taking down the bounce, say from 12 degrees to 10 or from 10 to eight. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. If you add loft to a wedge, you're also adding bounce. Now, Rory is playing a 46 degree pitching wedge. Usually the gaps between these uh, wedges in loft are consistent. So 46, 50, 54, 58 would make a lot of sense. Um, He's had a 54 in the bag in many instances, but he may at some points take a 52 and take it down to 50, and then a 56 to 54. You can sort of see where I'm going with this. So judging, because the mill grind two at this point was new, he may have been wanting to see what a 58 and what a 60 at standard lofts were going to be in terms of turf interaction and how that bounce is gonna work out. If you move now here, this gets pretty wild. This is Rory into 2021 Northern Trust, and the Scotty Cameron putters back and people just lost their mind. Oh my God, Rory's going back to Scotty Cameron. He was really, really frustrated at this point with his putting. Um, Rory has told me on numerous occasions that when he's having a really good putting day, he feels that with a heel toe weighted blade, he just putts even better. But on a bad putting day, a mallet like Spider will save him and help him a lot more. So he gets more consistency using putters that are mallets and spiders. The very best days are amplified even more by something that's a heel-toe weighted blade. He played most of 2023, all of 23 that I'm aware of, using a tailor-made spider because I think he's looking for consistency. And I think if you have the ball striking and the driving that Rory has, just being a tour average putter is going to be enough. So I, I would think that he has learned his lesson and I would think that spider is going to be in his bag. But at the 2021 Northern Trust, the Scotty Cameron came back out. Again, the Roars Protos at the 2022 U.S. Open at, um, at Boston at the Country Club. And then as we move into 2022, obviously he's also gone to Stealth. And Rory was using a tailor-made Stealth Plus driver. It has the movable, the sliding weight up in the front of that golf club. Holidays to one and all. All the best in 2024. And I look forward to seeing you again real soon.